Welcome back to another episode of the M Creator Tutorials for Procedures. Today we're going to be looking at all the different types of entity selectors. There are, I believe, five in total. There's also these ones down here, which uh, are basically a little bit different. So we'll be covering all the um, selector blocks that are currently in the actual application at the moment. And I'll kind of show some examples how they can be used. So let's get started. The first one is probably the most common one, and this one is the entity slash target selector. This can be found under the Minecraft components. Uh, under some triggers, you might find that it says entity. These are the general blocks that are used for the entity selector. You can also create a entity variable, local variable, and assign it to this particular variable under the custom variables, and then you can drag that onto there and it'll be stored to the actual entity variable itself. Uh, so again, the dependency is for entity. This is basically that particular one. It's used in many blocks, so this is probably the most common one you'll use. The next one that we have is source entity. This one's a little bit different. This one requires a source entity uh, dependency, so basically uh, depend, uh, it's a specific dependency that only some procedure triggers actually have. So again, you can basically run this as a script. Uh, we'll just create something quite quickly to kind of demonstrate that uh, we can kind of make something work. So we'll test if there is a specific entity that dies. Uh, this actually supports the dependency type. And then we can test if the source entity from our variable happens to be a server player and that will run on the server side and then we could I don't know do something like clear the potion effects for the source player which is the player that is basically doing it so that's basically what an idea of how to use the source script it'll be always the source entity will be always the entity that is affecting the other entity the entity iterator, uh, this one is a specific block for a couple different other blocks inside of the procedure system. So we've covered the X, Y, and Z. I haven't really found any other use for the iterator blocks, to tell you the truth. Um, there hasn't been anything that shows up under entities or anything like that. But uh, there is one for the world um, management, which allows you to basically use it to select all entities in that area. So basically like a wide search, you can also specify a specific animal like llama or whatever inside of it and just update the thing. So it'll basically test for that animal. If it is a group, like say you wanna specify it's in uh, llama or something like that, and then you could probably tame up uh, if the supported uh, dependencies were for source entity as well, then you could basically tame up the entity itself. Um, but yeah, we could basically, uh, when an entity dies, make it so a llama, any llamas in the area was tamed by that player. So it's a cool little uh, trick that you can use for some of the entity procedures. The immediate source entity, this is a mainly used for range items. So basically range entities specifically. Uh, under range items, you can kind of see that there are these dependencies for this particular item. This is uh, limited specifically for this kind of purpose. So you'll be using these in this in this area to actually determine a where the entity that actually spawns. So for example, if you wanted to spawn an entity when a projectile entity is basically hits a block, then what you could do is you could basically spawn that entity at the projectile's entity's location uh, rather than at the block location that it was basically spawning at. So for example, we'll just spawn entity, we'll do an uh, LA, and then we'll basically set the uh, coordinates for offsetting for X, Y, and Z a little bit. Uh, rather than use the X, Y, and Z, what we'll do is we'll actually update the um, entity source so we can basically use that projectile. So we can use the entity projectile. We'll just actually not offset it. We'll just leave it at the location. So it will be exactly where the center of the entity is. I forgot that you don't need the offset for entities. And then we can just use the immediate source entity to basically target that location. So we'll see what this actually does in game uh, when the block, the entity actually 
uh, the projectile entity hits the block, but we'll cover one more thing before we hop in game. There's these blocks down here, which we'll basically cover. So the last two blocks are the nearest entity. This one's a little bit different in the sense that you have to make sure that both of the settings on both of these types are selected. You also have to make sure that you actually test for the entity first uh, with the same distance and everything or the game will possibly crash. I've noticed that it will always crash within a certain time period if um, the the uh, entity is not existent in that area. So make sure to actually test for it first. Uh, so basically what I'm doing is I'm just gonna set this to um, basically a 10 for distance. That should be far enough for when a player actually kills an entity. And then we're going to basically make sure that uh, the entity that we're going to kill is a pig. So we can basically go ahead and uh, target that entity. So I'm going to test if the event slash target entity is a uh, pig, though I did select the alley at first, but then I realized it would probably be too hard to kill. So we'll do a pig instead. And then what we can do is we can basically apply the source entity uh, for this particular entity selector, and we'll give the player a potion effect of uh, speed, I believe. So, or yeah, we'll go with speed. So in game now, uh, we can shoot a projectile, just set up a particular item, but you can see where the entity actually spawns is at the, uh, location of the thing, uh, at the projectile location. So if we kill the pig, then we'll get a speed effect. We can kind of see that in our inventory that it says speed. So we can kill another one and we'll get another one for that. So that's uh, basically the system for the uh, nearest entity. So we're basically testing for the player. Um, if the nearest entity, okay, I missed that jump. But if the nearest entity doesn't exist, then um, basically it would crash if we didn't test for it. So uh, that little catch part is a good thing. So outside of that, uh, with that being said, those are all the entity selectors. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Thank you.